Hello, uh, good evening, and welcome back to the couch with me, Ama Pratt. It's a Tuesday, you know, and if you watched us last week, then you realize that last week we focused on philanthropic projects. So last week we spoke to the brother and the sister duo, Rebecca, and her brother, who had formed this um, organization that, you know, took it upon itself to go to secondary schools and educate young people, that's teenagers, about their body, sexual harassment, you know, to be precise. And their theme, let's not forget their tagline. They said, my body, you dare not. You know, don't ever forget the tag, my body, you dare not. I love that. And then also on the same show, we had, you know, the ladies from the Young Leaders Network, I'm sure. And their project was to go around to schools, communities, and distribute sanitary parts to young ladies as part of sanitary health education that they are doing they also had um, themes like religion ethnicity and, and 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 youth empowerment and also my favorite 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 thing women empowerment and equality you know uh, for for the sexes so great stuff all around this week we are staying on that theme you know this theme of giving back to society and impacting society shining light in your small corner so this evening we have other people with equally beautiful hearts who also have beautiful projects they are doing within this community to bring about change you know so essentially we are throwing the light on change makers what these projects are and trying to analyze you know what ways in which we too can be of help to the society you want to stay with us we'll be right back Today, we can trust sources of water anymore. Confidence is gone due to human activities. Same human activities introduces well-mechanized machines which purifies water. I bring to you ultimate natural mineral water. Deep from underground, tasty, well-purified and corporately packaged. Ultimate natural mineral water. Let's drink the new. For bulk, call 020-379-1888 or 0244-515-801. Ultimate Natural Mineral Water. My water, your water, our water. Young adults focusing on those with vulnerabilities like autism. And Asperger, Jenny's foundation aims to provide information, support, and assistance to parents of children with disabilities, their professional partners, and their communities. Jenny's foundation is committed to listening to and learning from families and encouraging full participation in community life by all people, especially those with disabilities. At JF, we believe that individual differences in children are a natural part of life and that disabilities provide children and adults with unique perspectives, insights, and abilities which contribute to the overall well-being of society. The Foundation values children as a hope for the evolving improvement of mankind and places great value on the family as, as a caring protector of children's vulnerability as well as a catalyst for their healthy growth and development and places a tremendous value on parents on parents because of the contributions they make as the leaders of families toward supporting the health, education and development of their children at home and in society. Jenny's Foundation also promotes the active and informed participation of parents of children with special needs in shaping, implementing and evaluating and evaluating public policy that affects them, and evaluating public policy that affects them. JF believes in the power of parents helping parents and has infused a proving JF believes in the power of parents and in helping parents and has influenced a proving model of peer support throughout all its work. Most Jenny's Foundation staff members are parents or family members of children with disabilities people with disabilities and those who have and are still working with those with special needs. Jenny's Foundation has seen Jenny's Foundation works alongside the Ghanaian government in curbing the burden of disabled children and their families to help break the cycle of poverty facing many rural communities with the hope 
of helping to contribute immensely in educating the disabled in educating the disabled families about health social development aiding disabled kids back to school and job creation through farming breeding woodworks art and more services are rendered by a team of highly committed fully trained and experienced staff members as well as trained volunteers Established in 2014 by Jennifer Jimfoa Brown Asenso, the organization seeks to bring awareness and support to less privileged children and young adults focusing on those with vulnerabilities like autism and Asperger. Jenny's foundation aims to provide information, support and assistance to parents of children with disabilities, their professional partners and their communities. Jenny's Foundation is committed to listening to and learning from families and encouraging full participation in community life by all people, especially those with disabilities. At JF, we believe that individual differences in children are a natural part of life and that disabilities provide children and adults with unique perspectives, insights and abilities which contribute to the overall well-being of society. The foundation values children as a hope for the evolving improvement of mankind and places great value on the family as, as a caring protector of children's vulnerability as well as a catalyst for their healthy growth and development and places a tremendous value on parents, on parents because of the contributions they make as the leaders of families towards supporting the health, education and development of their children at home and in society. Jenny's Foundation also promotes the active and informed participation of parents of children with special needs in shaping, implementing and, evalu and evaluating public policy that affects them. And evaluating public policy that affects them. JF believes in the power of parents helping parents and has infused the proven JF believes in the power of parents and in helping parents and has influenced a proven model of peer support throughout all its work. Most Jenny's Foundation staff members are parents or family members of children with disabilities, people with disabilities and those who have and are still working with those with special needs. Welcome back from the break, viewers. If you are just joining us, you know, we are on the couch, of course, with more Alan Pratt. And this evening, we are doing philanthropic projects. That's our topic. Our topic for this evening is philanthropic projects. And like you saw in that documentary just before seeing my face, made up by Chidi, of course, we are going to be focusing on Jenny's foundation, you know, for now. So I am privileged to have with me in the studio Jenny Jemfua Brown Ascent. So hi Jenny. Obviously you are Jenny. Jenny in yes. Jenny's foundation. Yes. That that's yes. you. I also have with me in the studio Zina Zita Yurenchi Hebu. Hey. And, and and what's your role? I'm the event manager. Event manager yes. in Jenny's foundation. foundation. Let, let's talk about Jenny's foundation for a bit and then we can talk about what you do. How did it how did it come about? Jenny, you tell me. Well, Jenny's foundation started from when I was very young because I always had this passion for special need kids. I like to use the word special needs because that's what they mean to me. So I don't, most often if you run about with me, you won't hear me say disabled children. You hear me saying special needs because they're special. Um, they, they, the uniqueness of those kids is what made me start Jenny's foundation. And obviously coming to Ghana, seeing the way they have been neglected and stuff, brought up the idea of actually taking this path on a serious note. So I think... Um, so let's, let's, let's understand this. Mm -hmm. Now you live in Ghana full time? Or are you Not here full time. For... Like, I come back and forth. Okay. Yeah, because I teach special need kids back in the UK. Okay. So you okay. actually can understand that the passion is there yeah. and I'd understand them, but I'm not permanently here in Ghana at okay. this moment. So today, for instance, you are here for how long? For this particular time? Two months. For two months. Oh, great. 
Yeah. Okay. So you are a teacher in the UK. Yeah. You teach special needs kids, kids in yep. the UK. Yeah. Now Jenny's foundation mm -hmm. was formed here or yes. in the UK. It was formed. It started off here in Ghana. But then I do do a lot of projects back in the UK as well. But my main focus is here because obviously I'm Ghanaian. So I, and the fact that I see a lot of um, the neglects here in Ghana mm. and obviously working with the wonderful kids that I work in my school, I thought to myself, why can't I bring that same you know, teaching and that mm. same kind of experience here in Ghana? doesn't make sense if I'm in the UK teaching them and making sure that they're okay and enjoying but then I come to Ghana and I just look at them the same way that the society is looking at them and I go back it makes no sense mm. so obviously having a foundation that's based on them for them and supporting them trying to get people to understand their, that world that they're in is like yeah my passion right now great stuff mm. how do you come in Zina how do you come in <laughs> Let me just take you a bit back. Okay. So um, I have a company, Tech Consult. Mm -hmm. We are into technology and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But every year we try to pick up a project that we are interested in and then we partner to see it come to life. Mm -hmm. So though it's a startup, we feel like it's important for us to start partnering in CSR activities. Mm -hmm. So I just tried a conversation with her when we met the first time. And I got to know that there are a lot of things about special needs kids that I have no idea on. Mm. The struggles of the parents, even for people who are yet to get married. It's like in Ghana, you don't even have the support system. Like the way you can have baby center in UK and US mm -hmm. that you can go and then get all the cute information mm -hmm. of when you give birth, the, the kids smiling and when they walk and when they talk. You know, they bet you have no, almost no support. Even the support that is there is, is very limited mm -hmm. and expensive. Mm -hmm. So that means when somebody is a special need kid, chances are they just lock you up so you don't become an embarrassment to the family. Then Jenny exposed me to the fact yeah, that, that way neatly, most yeah. often, especially if they can't neatly. afford it. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's so sad when it's actually coming from the parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not even the outside, yes. mm -hmm. the parents themselves. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's really heartbreaking because you think to yourself, you do not know the talent that this your child actually possesses. Mm -hmm. So obviously when I met up with Zita, I explained a lot of these things to her and the kind of projects that I do with the students that I teach, she was stunned. So that's how we, you know, we got talking and then we came up with the event. Yeah, yeah. So basically what we are doing is we are, while she's there, we are working on everything on the ground so she comes now that she's in then we just hit the ground running okay so i need to understand this relationship so you yeah. are in technology yeah technology entrepreneurship technology entrepreneurship <laughs> yeah you are a teacher yeah okay but somehow you met mm -hmm. you are the one with the foundation the we mm. both have um that technology um, background because yeah on top of teaching which teaching was not my actual um degree mm -hmm. i'm a computer scientist Okay. Just that. So that's how the, that's how we actually start. But then I said to her, you know what? That's not where my passion is. That's mm. education. Education is different from passion. Yeah. Just then. So us having that background was perfect, and also her having the passion for these um, special need kids just made everything merge together so easily. Okay. So the reason why I'm saying I need to understand this mm -hmm. relationship is I need to understand how this is an NGO, yeah. right? So for instance, let's talk specific things mm -hmm. for the projects that you do do you fund it yourself it's all self-funded everything is self-funded yep so that means you're not paying for her services no, no. okay so, so we, we need to understand like what's happening yeah there. <laughs> okay the whole project is being funded by her okay but i come in with other things anything that can help the project and run the project on her behalf since it's okay. a csr project. when she's not around when she's not around as she's not around even when she's in so for example um i i help save her money things like the venue for example i mm -hmm. go and find a venue that we don't have to pay for because it's not easy she has to work and bring her i had earned money to come and support people mm -hmm. one of the things we can do if we can't uh, is to contribute in other ways that can make the um you know the Facilitate the process. Yes, yeah. events a mm. success. Mm. And you know what it costs to have a venue for an event? For example, in Ghana. And I'm in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing. Getting mm. the day set up, getting people to perform for free, mm. getting designers to, to dress their kids for free, a whole lot getting artists to perform for free. That's a lot of money 
that she will have to pull almost everybody in to be able to pull the event through. Mm -hmm. But those are the places we come in and try to beat it down. Getting the dealing with the Ghana way of working is another headache that we have to show them. But that, that's a skill, you, a special <laughs> you skill you need you to know, have. You know, you know, you <laughs> know. So it's a special skill you need to have. Okay, how, so I understand the yeah. foundation because I need a bit of um, mm. background. Yeah. Okay, so now that I understand the foundation, let, let's, let's talk about specifically what the foundation does. What do you do? What do you okay. do? What the foundation does is basically educate people about the challenges that these kids are facing, the neglects, and also exposing the different talents that these children also possess. Because most people just think, oh, when they hear a disabled child, they think, okay, there's no good use. It's like, that's it. The child is, can't do nothing. Let's brush that child to the corner. But what they fail to understand is each and every autistic child, let me just use the case of autism, every autistic child is different. You would never get one that's the same. Just then. Mm. You would never get one that's the same. And they're so unique and so smart that there's certain talents that these kids have that us that are mainstream don't even have just mm. then. So it's about getting parents, my thing is the parents that have these kids to actually understand and enjoy these talents that their own children have, just then because then when, when you're able to notify all these things that your kid possess, then you can also express it to the outside world for them to accept your child. But if you're there and you're hiding your child, but for all you know, your child is a, is a programmer, just then, if you go into Google in the IT sector, a lot of the um, people that have employed are autistics. Reason being that when an autistic child is doing coding, they do it systematically. There's no glitches, just then. Whereby someone that's mainstream, they're probably thinking, oh, I have to go out here, maybe tomorrow I've got this party to attend, just then. But once an autistic child is given a task, if that task is not finished, they're not leaving. So why is it that if, us from the UK and America and other places can understand these talent that these kids have and we're able to use it for the benefit of the country or for the, shall I say, the community or for the family. Why can't us Africans and Ghanaians do the same too? That's why I actually build this foundation that, so that we can bring these talents out of these kids and make good use of it. Okay. So essentially you want to take away the myth that once you have a child mm -hmm. that's special needs and yeah. here we call them disabled the word you don't I like i hate that word i know i know <laughs> but once that tag is put on a child mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that that child has no future yep. or can do nothing you are yep. saying that there are things in there yep there are that we need to unearth mm -hmm. or encourage to bring to the fore yep and, and, and things like that. Yep. And even a brilliant example of IT, yep. you know, very specific sectors within mm -hmm. the... Um, 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 Google. That they, they, yeah. they, they, they could fit in. You wanted mm -hmm. to add something. I saw yeah. you nodding. The first time, you know, she doesn't like the word um, disabled. disabled. She prefers special. special. But what I always say is that what if majority of the people were autistic? Would that make them even special needs? Mm. In, in this life, it's like the majority controls what the other people think about the minority. They're just minority in something. You just have to see and understand how they operate. If we're all lefties or disabled, you rather say the person who has four legs is the disabled one because when you look around you, everybody looks the same. I don't know if you're getting what I'm yeah. saying. So it's part, so I got to learn a lot from, from her and I'm like, why not? Like, let's do this. People mm. need to understand. There are even some angles. People think, okay, people with kids, you know, people with kids that are disabled or are less, sorry to say, special needs. <laughs> but it goes beyond that. The, the single guy who is yet to get married, the single lady who is yet out there yet to get married, she needs to have a support system. She needs to know what to do when she's faced with that mm -hmm. problem. The teacher who is in the you know in regular Montessori, when you, uh, you should be able to identify, you an, identify an, an, an autistic and child. And you see, today I was reading about um, this condition. Um, oh, cerebral palsy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was watching something on TV and something triggered mm -hmm. my mind. And immediately I picked up my phone and I googled, you know, because I wanted to know something. There was a specific mm -hmm. thing I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And my first thought was, as a parent mm -hmm. who has had a child who is not up to, let's say, four months, mm -hmm. how do you know that this baby that I have has special needs? Yeah. 
Are you able easy. to write? We are not told these no, things. No, no. But there are specific signs. For instance, in cerebral palsy, we are told that it's the way they control their neck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That will tell you if your baby has mm -hmm. issues yeah. or not. <laughs> yeah. And these are things nobody ever the, the talks to us about. To, I think the child has to reach a certain, a certain age yeah. before you can pick it up. And then the, the worst part is, back here in Ghana, Usually, when you when you are panicking, especially if you're a first time mom, maybe your child is not talking and is having delays. Oh, don't worry, he's fine. Every he's child talk. is different. You know, don't worry, he's a boy. Boys talk late, so you're just gonna be there. There's nothing wrong with going to check and see if you need early intervention. Going to check where? Anywhere, like it, right? They have <laughs> kolebu, 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 kolebu. <laughs> but let me tell you something about kolebu. They'll give like three months, four months queue. <laughs> like you have to book the before they bad. before they yeah. see you. They will say like most of it's like three, four months. Like the queue is by long. three, four months, you will know yourself because by that time, you have been developed yeah. enough for you yeah. to know if there's a problem you know, or not. So that's one of the reasons why we're having this program because we need to, you know, engage Montessori teachers to understand that one, you have to help parents because I don't know they even spend more time with the parents. Mm -hmm. The kids goes, they just go home to sleep, right? You should be able to identify when a child is a special need, just like mm -hmm. the way you can tell every kid and how bright they are and yep. what they are, you know. And when you do. Majority of the parents don't have that enough money to just start treatment or therapy and all that. That means you will be expected. I think it's more information mm. than money. Yeah, I yeah, believe that as well. Me. It's I believe expensive. that as well. Correct me. I what, think it's what more I, what I, the lack of information than mm. the lack of funds. I think that is one bit, and we don't have enough facilities. So they are charging. From what I hear, they are charging some in dollars. Their meals. They seeing a private um, um, therapist. It's not cheap learning to like the phonics. People who teach kids how to read, they are, they are expensive. They're not, yeah, for, yeah, they are not, they are inadequate. I didn't even like, know they existed. They, you <laughs> that you have money, so that means that means for an average or let me say a middle class or in, middle income parent, mm -hmm. when you identify that your, your child has special needs, you you prefer or you hope that the school can hold the funds. For a while, to you, you even figure out what it is, mm -hmm. to figure out where you find the money to what do, to do what to do, because what happens, the, especially the, the moms, sorry, they go sorry crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's your foundation gives this information. So, for instance, if I find out that my child is a little slow, yeah, can I contact yeah. you for information? Help? Yeah, like what do I? Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah, you can. Great stuff. I like that. Yes. Yeah. And you know, we, you don't even have to go far. There's one thing a lot of people don't realize, but most of the kids nowadays, they're delayed because the devices and a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. And people don't even know they're that. delayed. So all you know is that the kids used to speak around very early because it was a compound house where everybody's jumping around mm -hmm. and talking. Without now it's kids. just father, mother, laptop, iPad, and you know, the phone. <laughs> phone. So you have things that are not even directly autism that, in fact, parents still need to understand. Mm -hmm. You get my point. So but that's, the, the thing is, also some parents need to accept it when their kids, when they find out that their kids are autistic. Yes. Because I've come across so many parents whereby the kids are delayed, mm. and they actually I see the traces of autism or Asperger's, and then when you bring up that topic to them, it's like no, mm -hmm. I don't want to hear denial. it. They're in denial. Yeah. So then they leave. And when what they don't understand is when these things are picked up early and you don't act upon it, it gets worse mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're not giving them the support that they actually need from the beginning. You need to actually capture them in that kind of world that they're in and actually play a role in their life as okay you understand them because if not it's like from yes the beginning it's not yeah you're molding you're molding because when that ha doesn't happen that's when they build that bubble around them where it's like nobody understands me so i'm going to keep mute or i will respond when i feel like responding or if not this person doesn't understand me so i will respond back in anger because that's what they understand and that's when all that stereotypes comes in do you understand because it's like they can't express themselves in any better way than actual throw tantrums or show anger and when that happens the, the, the person will point finger oh that child is naughty but no it's because that child is trying to express something and they're not able to so therefore the only way they can is maybe throw something at you or hit you or do you not know, do get what i'm trying to yeah. say so i think that we need to find a way to also advise these parents that it's okay it's, it, there's nothing wrong with having an autistic child just because some autistic child do develop full, full um, speech 
just and they do develop it may take five years more than a normal average child or even 10 years more but it's the work has to come from you the teachers and whoever whatever therapist that you're using if you all work hand to hand they're faster but if you're just there and thinking no i all my friends kids are okay so therefore my child has to be okay so therefore what you're saying to me i'm not willing to accept it then you're not going to get nowhere because then you're going to end up with a child that's like 10 year old that's still in that mentality of a two-year-old and then that's when you that's when you start shutting the doors on your child mm -hmm. when your friends come around or when yeah. the relative comes around and that's why we're trying to do a lot of these events that we invite people in both mainstream and disabled people so they come and like interact with each other then it's like let's say if, let's say if Zeta has a, um, a son or a daughter that's got autism she comes, she liaises with someone that's got a child that doesn't have autism. You both can talk about it and feel free. So then you know that, okay, the whole world isn't like how it is at home. Mm -hmm. You can talk to someone There's a world out that there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All that stereotyping, you can adjust and let people understand what you're going through. Same way you also have um, the thought that, okay, this is, there's an organization out there. If I need help, I can pick I up can the phone or I can go there. That's what we're trying to bring in because I've realized that Ghana doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. And even if they do, it's like it's expensive. But why mm -hmm. should it be expensive? Yeah. Yeah. It should be a service that should be, if, there's, if not anything, up free because it's information you're given. Mm -hmm. Maybe the person can't go on Google and download a whole pamphlet of uh, information. But Listen, maybe Google sometimes scares you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes it's scares Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes yeah. you, you go there and you read something. <laughs> you're sick you're dying tomorrow like, Jesus, come for me now. Yeah. Come for me now. Yes. <laughs> you know so i think like having <laughs> some the kind of stuff that we're working mm. on will help a lot of people mm. because it'll be there'll be a space for them to come and seek advice which is free advice we will not charge them for that kind of advice just come we will help you through and if we need to give you information for you to take back home what we're, we're trying to work on is like like leaflets that give men a lot of information but not Thick. We don't want to give people thick books that they just go <laughs> home and read. just dash it and maybe use it as a coaster in the house. So, you know, so as time goes, I'm hoping that more people will be, feel free and just come looking for us for all these services and help. <laughs> yeah. So in the documentary, we saw you in, in Zulezu. In Zulezu. Oh my goodness. What was yes. happening there? Talk to me about that. Oh, that place. Hmm. Is the place is amazing. Like it's so amazing mm. and it. And it's sad that it's such a hidden place with so, so little help. The, the place has so much potential in the sense where if, I, sometimes I feel to myself like, I, how, it's magical how these kids are living on this, all this water and then they're always happy. But then where is the help? Mm. Can you believe the whole of that community that only had one school? So if you have a child that's autistic or has oh, um, yeah. Down syndrome yeah. or whatever, you, you know oh, what's yeah. happening. Literally, your child is not going to go to school, mm. you know. And that's what, when, I, when we went there, that's what we actually um, recognised that these kids were not being put into the school. They were just left there to just play around because there's not even enough services or... Te there was no teachers. I forgot to mention that there was no teachers coming in, yeah to teach these kids that if that one school that they had that there was no teachers coming in to teach these kids so the first thing i asked them so what would you guys be happy if we was to get someone to just come maybe once a week or something and help you guys and the way the response was really good i'm thinking why is it that the government can't do the minimum for these people because it's a beautiful place just and there's so much potential that the, tal the talents that even the mainstream kids have there, the carvings that they're doing and everything, all that, you, like, you guys have all this tourism thing that you're promoting. You can make the place beautiful enough that people will invite the outsiders to come and sh sh give support b for these children to make the place even much better for them to actually educate themselves and have a better living there. Mm -hmm. And if you had seen the full documentary, you'd have understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from because it's really heartbreaking. It's really, really heartbreaking. And I challenge myself thinking, so if in Accra this is going on where people are being neglected, then yes, there's, it's like next to zero out there. Yeah. 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 It's a sad situation yeah. when you step out. Mm -hmm. It is. It really is. Is. So, apart from this one, mm -hmm. you know, Zita, yeah. our events, <laughs> a person, <laughs> what are other events are we, you know, what other events have you done? Talk we've to me about. We have, you mean, regards to Jenny's Foundation? Yes. 
Okay, we did uh, a fundraising charity in UK. I think mm -hmm. it was last month. Yep. Okay. How did that go? Did you raise oh, enough funds? Oh, it was lovely. Yeah. So did we you did. raise enough funds? Though? We raised good funds. Great. Yeah, we had to. We we, we always <laughs> <laughs> we, we aim to success. You know, yeah. it was lovely because what it was, mm. it was my first ever event I did with a lady called um, Elizabeth, who I work with in the UK, okay. and it was a bit. We wasn't a bit of a panic mood because it was our first ever, and we um, launched it in the UK for the first time, saying that okay, mostly when people are doing fundraising events, it's always boring. So we did something with a bit of a twist. Mm -hmm. You know, had um, all these artists come and perform Which live music. We had Mr. Silva, no. yeah. <laughs> you know, and we had poets and um, Rhyme Sonny coming over. Like, we, the day was we just... We love Rhyme here. Oh, you, you don't even have to mention it. Everybody <laughs> loves Rhyme. Everybody <laughs> loves Rhyme, you know. that so he set the place on fire. Mm. The moment he got there, I was like, yes. So, f and I said to him, do you know that you practically just made this event like the best of the best? <laughs> because the moment this guy started the poetry, it's like everyone just wanted more and more and more. And I thought to myself. Okay. So the money that we raised, mm -hmm. you see that money that we raised? Yeah. Where is it going specifically? Okay. The money that has been raised, half is going towards the event that we're doing on the 13th. Okay. What? Tell me about that. Let's okay. stay here. The event on the 13th. That's is, the 13th of April. If, yeah, 13th okay. of April. And that's taking place in um, Royal, Royal, Giggles. Royal Giggles. Royal Giggles, Montessori. Royal Giggles. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Royal I like the name Royal Giggles. <laughs> yeah. Where? Where Glory is it? Glory Hills. Glory Hills. Okay. Yeah. So that's the event. Basically, it's, an, um, how do I, it's a positivity um, event for us to shine positive lights on kids with disability mm -hmm. which I don't like using that word so special needs kids special needs kids, <laughs> special needs kids. Uh -huh. so we're inviting anyone that's got special need kids mm -hmm. from anywhere any part of Ghana to just come on that day to celebrate with us have fun and then get educated mm -hmm. on that day so we'll have round table discussions where parents can also come and get advice from different um, sectors. Listen, we are not leaving without and saying teachers. a little something to the parents. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a important. Lot. Yeah. We, we have to go there. Yeah. What do you say to a parent who has a special needs child? I would say... Sorry, let me yeah. just say something before yes. you move. Yes, <laughs> come in. Come I in, have, Personally, I have uh, one request. Mm -hmm. Mandes, please stop making everything spiritual yeah like for real yeah. the reason why i'm saying that is that i encountered a bit of something at, at a church you mm -hmm. know they always have a sunday school mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong with seeing a kid that is three or four networking mm -hmm. you don't have to pay thanks on the kid the kids don't even like that especially when they're autistic yeah they don't understand why you're yelling because they are not possessed no. they are, who to be here anyhow? Like you are mm. trying to do something that is mm -hmm. so. Please stop making all your problems spiritual, and then you know find the right information. And that's the only time you can overcome overcome whatever fear yeah. and whatever is out there mm. that you think is against you that you don't understand that you have to make it spiritual. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So please, let God have a reason for making human beings smart. Mm -hmm. We need to to stick to that. I love what you just it. said because yeah. that's our attitude to everything. Yeah, yeah. everything is spiritual. Yeah. Like there's, it's sad. There's a colleague of mine here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sweetheart, I will. I'm going there. <laughs> who has a little um, skin situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody's telling her, oh, this can't be normal. <laughs> um, it is normal. It's allergies. Oh, it's my normal. Goodness. People so, are dying every day. <laughs> it's normal. They are dying. They are refusing surgeries. Mm -hmm. They are giving all their money to pastors. They are eating grass. Be like, that's just eating crazy. Eating grass. You should and educate and yourself. And when your pastor yeah. is yeah. sick and have a rash, you ask, your pastor goes to Rabito. Right. <laughs> oh, and Dr. Dele has been here. Dr. Dele, right? Yes, he's yeah. been here to see. Yeah. I know your people. Yeah. You know our people. Oh, <laughs> people are my people. It's from my hometown. Mm -hmm. I, I see. see. I see. I see. Well, Great. So let's say something to the mothers. Okay. Well, the best advice I could give to any mother with um, special needs is that try and find out the special in your own child. Just and don't wait for other people to dictate whether that the, the child is um, possessed, as she, she was saying, or that the child has some evil, whatever it is that you uh, Ghanaians or whatever mm -hmm. like to say. Find that specialness in your own child, and if you can't, you've got people like us, just to just come to. Don't go seeking advice for people that will give you the wrong advice, because 
having a child that's got special needs is not a big of a problem. There's always a way to solve these issues. If, you, if you're scared, there's people out there to help you. So that's the only advice I said, just find that special in your own child. Mm -hmm. I think that would be my next slogan, actually. <laughs> find that special as in your own in child. In your own child. Yeah. Find that special in your own child. That's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. I approve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still yeah. approve. Yeah. So, it's, you know, ju ju just to wrap up, I want mm -hmm. to, you know, situate this in, in a nice way. So, essentially, mm -hmm. what Jenny's foundation does mm -hmm. is that it's dedicated to kids with special mm -hmm. needs. Yes. And so, you organize events to educate people mm -hmm. about special needs kids yeah. what to do with them the information mm -hmm. you need and and things like that mm -hmm. are you yeah. working specifically with any special needs kids do you have any directly that you are working with what here in ghana, here in ghana. that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to establish on this trip because okay. usually when i come i just I just have a system where I come, I go and donate or I raise funds for a specific um, organization or a specific child that has been brought to me and then I just don't do a lot of the follow-ups. So now I want to have a database of kids that okay, I know that okay, these kids are part of Jenny Foundation's mm -hmm. group where I keep um, cups yeah. on them. Yeah, that's, how, that's the main thing mm -hmm. I'm focusing on this year mm -hmm. because it's no point if every time I come, give donations, go back and then there's nothing being followed up. So hopefully this time I can grab about five or more. Great stuff. Yeah. Great, great stuff. Well, <laughs> viewers, this is the, the time that you join the conversation. The number is 26 084 That's 26 Do join in the conversation. Tell us what you think. You know, and if you have any questions for Jenny and Zina, send them in right yeah. she's sending their oh, questions yeah. in and, and yeah. you'd answer okay so <laughs> let's talk about the 13. Mm -hmm. yeah. why should i come to royal girls, royal girls <laughs> want to sorry why, why why should i come there should i take it go yeah. ahead <laughs> events, <laughs> events <Exactly. manager. laughs> with pleasure with pleasure i want to say that even if you first if you don't have uh, if you, you, I, I believe you're married and probably you have a kid. Or yeah. you okay, so I want to believe that anywhere a mother can leave a child and also have some peace of mind isn't a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she <laughs> where you can watch them get some that is snacks. the meanest way the to meanest, put it. <laughs> you can be watching them and other people are helping you. Have some like, you know, oh, yeah. Let me sit here and watch it just like a playground because oh, we have all the yeah. kids amenities there. Mm. So that's the first one of the very basic reasons to come. <laughs> You are thinking about it. <laughs> well, the way you, you know? put it. <laughs> and then, um, I want to believe that there are some people who have kids who still have kids. Mm -hmm. We are not saying you are going to have autistic or kids with special needs. Mm -hmm. But having information is important. Mm -hmm. For yourself, for your family, or for that friend, you know, that can confide in you and all that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, who knows, maybe you fall in love with these kids and then mm -hmm. you do something major for them. We're not just talking about autistic kids. I mean, we have kids that, that are also deformed in other areas and all that. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's, there's going to be performances from people. Have, mm -hmm. you, have you seen the um, deaf and dumb group that dance and sing? Mm -hmm. Well, you, come well, on you have to come and see them. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we have a fashion show. We will do a runway where mm -hmm. we have kids with disabilities or pair with kids without disabilities. Then we have a whole fashion show up there. Mm -hmm. One of our designers is personally also have disabilities. And then the other one, we chose two main designers. Yeah. One has a disability, the one doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they're all dressed in the kit. So that's a oh. mixture of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, other events. People do piano. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let a, a, an autistic child play a piano. So you tell me if he can play something. <laughs> 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 you know? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we'll have a round table discussion mm -hmm. where who educate people, singles, uh, who are looking to get married and settle down one day. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Montessori teachers that will be around. So we've actually invited schools to come around mm -hmm. there to come mm -hmm. and then um, so they can, they can understand the challenge they're up against. Mm -hmm. So that when you support, as I said earlier, when you support a kid that has a disability, mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that the school even turn them away. They don't give them admissions because they feel mm -hmm. like there's so much work and it's not worth I, their I, registration. I don't want to do this. Yes. Yeah. I but don't want to do this. I must say, I must say, mm. um, we are so thankful for Royal Giggles for doing this in the first oh, place. Yeah. And I'm also so thankful to them because 
they are taking the, the powers of celebrities that you want to read about they are taking their first kid and it's not mm -hmm. it's not funny you have to make serious adjustments even between the the kids that are don't, 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 don't have special needs what their parents, parents will think, think managing yep. that then to what the special chair <laughs> that a kid will use to his different meals mm -hmm. to the fact that he's not the so mobile nothing, yeah. it takes a montessori that goes beyond just making profit to do that. I don't mm -hmm. even get what I'm saying. Because they need special diet. Yes, yes they, they need do. special seats. They need seats. special yep. everything. And the, the, the trick is that even though they need special stuff, we have to still act in a way that doesn't make it look so special so they mm -hmm. can blend. That's the, that's the difficult part. Because they are kids. They wonder, why am I being treated yes. so Yes, so you don't have to make it so obvious. And then one of the things we aim at you know, showing is that you know, when you're a kid, you grow up to be an adult then become choosy. A kid will play with a disabled kid without thinking twice. Mm -hmm. There's another that will like, do you think if I play with him mm -hmm. or her, I'll head him? I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's one of the things we want to highlight. And of course, to draw government's attention to the fact that people that have disabilities are not useless people. Yeah. And you have to care for them. You mm -hmm. have to prioritize whatever their needs are. So, for example, if you're running an HIV campaign or mm -hmm. A hepatitis campaign or something, it's good that you are doing it in general, but it's always good to give preference to people who already have some kind of disability and stuff like that. So, those are some, and we'll have artists performing that day. Uh, we have artists, some underground please? artists, we okay. you know, we, we are still trying to pull the big ones there, but we have um, 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 Mama Volta, I don't know if you've heard about her before, it's a new underground artist, and then. Mokoko, they think there's one called Mokoko. We're <laughs> no, trying to, to get, get Mokoko, so I'm trying to get a name. You know this artist. Um, we're trying to get um, a girl. You are not artist. very hip, are you? No, no. Yeah. I'm worse than her. Yeah. So Can you imagine? <laughs> okay. Got it. But we are trying, we are trying. So those are, those are some things we are looking at doing. Mm. And then the face painting, the bouncy castles and all that. So please, people should come. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to wait until you are faced with a problem. Like, okay, I had it somewhere. Let me go in now, find out. No. Mm. You don't have to wait. I'm like, there are most people, they get hit with the issue before. Like, ah, what is that? It is what because in their I brain, do? you give birth. Six months, a child crawls. One year, you have to work. The next two years, you have to be talking. That's the routine. So mm -hmm. in their head, they have this premeditated expectations of what the child is supposed to be doing. So it hits them hard. And you realize there's actually not enough information even available in Ghana for you to mm -hmm. even tap into. Then you have to now go into them eating clean and not eating some things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot. So people need to come and have Information is key. It's very yeah. important. It's key in everything. Let me read a few of the messages that, mm -hmm. you know, have come in. This one says, hi, Pan-African TV is the best way of... Hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Just send your name, you know, so that I also give you a shout out. This one is from Dibku Ishmael at One Old <laughs> Traffic Light. Mm -hmm. He says, you know him? My brother. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> he says, good evening to you all, especially my lovely sister Zita <laughs> Dibku. And he says, these ladies are doing what should have been done by government. <laughs> Ghanaians should be supportive. Ghanaians should support them to do more for Mother Ghana. Amma, please ask them to extend their lenses to the Upper West oh, region. Oh, now I'm feeling bad. So <laughs> well, you know Deep Cool? That's my brother. You know that we love him here in Pan African TV, right? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's one of our regulars. Oh, really? Yeah, Deep Cool. Especially oh, on the morning show. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So, Deep Cool, hi. <laughs> Okay, this one says, I'm Uthman Jerry. I really love this girl. Is she married? The one in the blue shirt. That would be. Oh, you. yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uthman <laughs> Jerry. Unfortunately, no, she, she is. is. She is married. <laughs> Jenny, are you married? No. But Jenny's not married, though, so. But I'm okay. But she's I'm fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, this one says, good even hello, good evening. My name is Menson from Ho Hohoi. Please, I would like to contribute positively to this. I have fallen in love with their passion to take care of the specials. I would like to have their contact to attend the event. Thanks. Great. That's good stuff. That's mm -hmm. good stuff. But you, you have to give your contact because, mm. you know, I'm thinking if somebody has... Um, donation or... Yes, input, somebody has yeah. anything that they want mm -hmm. to you know, ask about. It would yeah. be great to have the number there. All the highs, I see you. Just mm -hmm. send something more concrete than high. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
in the voice notes, I see the voice notes. I'll, I'll, okay. Um, it's a, there's one special need in my area who wants to do music okay. but doesn't have the money to pay for the studio time. How may he be helped? His name is Naro from Aflao. Okay. So that's a very specific... Well, um, fortunately, mm -hmm. I do have um, a few connections with mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Quest, he's really, really good and he's in like 100% support in my this Jenny Foundation project. So if he does have the talent and does have the time and really has the passion to do it, then yeah, he can contact us and then we can Great. take it from So him. let's yes. give out the number yeah. because yeah. our time is up. Let's well, give out the number. I don't number. know my number off head. <laughs> oh, the same <laughs> yeah, because, Let me, let me yeah. say 0266 0 Okay. So if there are any questions, mm -hmm. yeah. if anybody wants to come... Are we paying for the event on the 30th? No, it's free. No, no, no. It's, it's a not. free event. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come with your kit. Yes. Yep. Please if you have do. special needs kits, come yes, with yep. them. Yes, come with them. If you are somebody who wants information, come, come along. Come. If you are somebody who wants to help, how, how do I help? Assuming I, I've heard about this and like, um, was it Uthman who, who, who sent the text? And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm so interested. Oh, I'd like to help this foundation. Mm -hmm. Specifically, what kind of help do you need? Well, there's different different kind of help. There's, okay. there's financial help. There's um, those that actually can be hands-on kind of help on okay. the day. Or even um, what, we, what I'm trying to also establish is a family group or like a parents group mm -hmm. where parents that do have these special needs kids can actually have a space or um, have a time together where they discuss and have um, give each other advices. Mm. So hopefully by the end of the event, we could actually establish such a group. So if someone is ready to take on, because I don't think Zita would want to take all of that pressure <laughs> on herself, no. you know, so if we get someone mm -hmm. that's willing to take that spot, then yeah, that, that would be awesome. Would be good. What if I just mm -hmm. want to join the foundation? Oh. You're welcome yeah. to join. Okay, so it's an open group. You can all yeah. yes, yes, okay, yes. And great then, I think you can you can equally share when you, when you see when we go to the page of Jenny's Foundation. You see all the stuff that are going on there. You mm -hmm. can share the flyers. There's a Facebook people, page, yeah, Jenny's page. Foundation, and Instagram, yeah. Jenny's Instagram, Foundation. Instagram, Jenny's Foundation. And I just yeah. want to quickly add that the roundtable discussions. What we are planning to do is that after the, we just test their knowledge to see if they have the right information, mm -hmm. then we'll give them. We are planning to give them a certificate of um, participation. Mm -hmm. Especially for the Montessori teachers, which yes. is a plus that yes. I have knowledge and I can handle this kind mm -hmm. of situations when they come. So that's one of the reasons why if you're a Montessori teacher or planning to be, you need to be there. This would be a place for you. It's, yes, it's, it's a plus. Yes. Not, not for yourself as a parent, if you have kids or you're here to have kids. Mm -hmm. And of course, for your, your career. Great stuff, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff, ladies. Great stuff. Great stuff. I love what you do. Yeah. And I keep saying this is just about all of us looking around us, mm -hmm. you know, being aware, being in tune with our communities and seeing what spaces there are and yep. filling those spaces, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. You know, we all say, and, and you said it, somebody said it when they sent a message that these are things government should be doing, mm -hmm. but if government is not doing what it's supposed to do or if the society is not taking care of its own, we can't all sit back and throw that up. No. no. We can't do that. No. We will suffer no. for it. Of course. If we don't take care of our own, we will all suffer yes. for it. So Every, uh, everyone. Let yeah. me just chip in that as much as we're doing this for the special needs needs kids, trust me, the thing that motivates me more are the mothers. The mothers. Mm -hmm. The mothers. The, the depression that comes yeah. with it. A child me is too. a child. They are good to try to be happy as a child. Mm -hmm. They don't oh, even you know what's mother. Happening. No, they don't. It's a different ball game. And then you you pass the energy into the house. You pass the energy into into your marriage. You pass the energy into your work. Then an innocent person that, who doesn't have an autistic child, everybody gets that energy. Mm -hmm. If you don't resolve social issues, that's what happens. Everybody will definitely get a fair share when it comes around. It won't come to you directly like an autistic child slapping you. <laughs> no, but their mother is going to pass that depression Pushing. and pain to a client. Yeah. Everybody she comes in contact yes. with. Yes. Everybody and she has to contact just, with. It's depressing. And it's unfortunate we don't have enough mental health facilities. You, you have to agree in Ghana that you are mad and go to um, the pantheon directly <laughs> or people don't actually believe that Uncountful. depression works, right? Mm. The, people lose their careers. You just cannot do anything. The child is with you and you're the mother. Great so that's my, my big Great motivation. Stuff. So viewers, yeah. use the number. Please, please, <laughs> please. Just just use the number that um, um, Zainad gave us. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Zita.
Thank you. Zinat Thank you Zita, Yechi, yes. former <laughs> Diku, <laughs> and of course, Jenny Jane for a brown accent. So, yeah. thank you, ladies, so Thank much. you. Thank you. Mogis, your elbows. Mogis, your elbows. Grease your elbows. Well, <laughs> we will take a break. We'll come back with the next project. Stay with us. Stay with us. Wrong. They took all my precious stuff. Did they harm you? They just when they were about to, they hit the siren and bolted. Scout the area. You don't have security cameras? They stole everything. I thought you used ghost cameras from security. Security warehouse? Yes, you should. They couldn't have gotten away the way they did without either being electrocuted or being caught on a CCTV camera. Yes, Dad. Everything has been installed. Yes. Okay. I will be fine, Dad. They are for this debate tonight. Can you guys keep playing cool? Go do the fire job. Kelly High Tech. She didn't lie bad. It could happen tonight. This is no fence. Alright, Inspector Obo. They couldn't get in this time. How come? Security warehouse. Smart choice. I guess you have some footage for me yes. there. Crystal clear picture. Pause. I think I know this man. He has a long history with robbery and rape. You are fortunate to have equipped your house with gadgets from security warehouse. Call it in. We'll begin the investigation from here. Control, come over. Hey, Bukuya. The thing you know, the pressure to me to say, what tongue can frame from me? You said the big one, yeah, and that's how you are. They said when you are Joe, what? What do you want to do? My nose and cover to me, Kaba. Ah, ma. We are here, the men you are with Joe, and you see the man with tongue can frame from me. And <laughs> And then I see. Ben, send Raya. You are trying to miss a kill. Ah, strong shaming. If you need that. Oh, Kusha. Hey, I'm a man. Do I? Come on, guys. Let me tell you. I go far back. The piano is going to be too. And this time, Kusha is going to tell me that I'm from Adolf. I'm not sure. I'm saying, I'm trying. Hey, Mr. Kill. Me, I'm going to show you. And this time, I'm not so bad. You know. Hey, yeah. Heaven Ghana is a non-governmental organization 
as well as a non-profit organization established in 2014 to bring hope to deprived community schools and children. Through community mobilization, Child Heaven Ghana has impacted several lives through its social intervention programs and has the desire to cover more communities in its quest to affect living standards in communities. Charles Heaven Ghana is a non-governmental organization as well as a non-profit organization established in 2014 to bring hope to deprived community schools and children. Through community mobilization, Child Heaven Ghana has impacted several lives through its social intervention programs and has the desire to cover more communities in its quest to affect living standards in communities. Welcome back from the break, viewers. If you are just joining us, you know, this evening on the show, we are talking philanthropic projects. So different, you know, projects by different people, different organizations, you know, um, that are trying to give back to the society. We started last week and this week we are continuing. Next week we will do it, again, you know, also because I think that there's need to encourage ourselves you know, encourage ourselves as people to do more, to do more, do more, right? Do more for this community. Well, the next project is also about kids. The name of the organization is Child's Heaven Foundation. And I have with me the founder who happens to be AC Nens. AC, hey. AC, <laughs> welcome to the couch. Welcome, welcome. Tell me about Child's Heaven Foundation. Well, Charles Heaven Foundation Ghana is a non-profitable organization and uh, which deals basically with kids. Mm. And then initially we started with kids, but we added deprived community schools mm. because looking at um, the community schools in Ghana here, some are very deprived and then you, you just can't ignore them like that. So that's how mm. but it all started when i was doing my attachment in cape coast as a social worker so you are a social worker yes i'm a social worker okay so the idea of this started when i had to take care of one girl who used to come and wash for me mm. one day she came and i was like why is she not in school she said she has been sacked for fees so i went to check and the fees was barely 50 cities. So from there, I was like, if I can do this, why don't I devote my time and then help? So it's, that's how it started from there on and on. And it's been like that. That's how the foundation started growing. So specifically, what, what do you do? What we do is initially when we started, we started donating to orphanage homes and then looking at what they what need. What you donating? We're giving food items, okay. books, um, toiletries and those stuff like beddings, towels, um, bed sheets, mattresses and all those things that we were giving out. But along the line... There was issues with the social welfare department and then the orphanage homes, whereby when the things are sent, they don't give it out to the kids. Mm. They rather um, spend it on their own and all that. So uh. we had to drift let, away let's, from Let's there. hold on for just a minute. <laughs> so you are telling me that you had situations where you will go to an orphanage and donate yeah and the donation will not be given to the kids yeah i'm a social worker and i've worked in an orphanage home before so if i'm talking i you know, know exactly what yes i know what i'm saying and it's it's really not all the orphanages not all M most orphanages are doing a good job the be because taking care of kids is not easy. Mm. Most especially those without parents. It's just not easy. 
So along the line, if the things are brought to you and you are not giving it to the kids as is expected, it turns into something else. So what do I do? How do I identify that this orphanage that I'm going to yeah. assist is, is a good one? Like, I mean, I can't just get up and go and give to an orphanage if I don't know if what I'm giving will end up in somebody's house as against being used yeah. to help there there are registered organizations okay so the registered ones yes there are registered ones those ones are strictly under the social welfare department whereby when you go in it, before you do those donations you have to do an inquiry first with them if you want to be sure if it's registered you can demand for their certificates and I believe that you know a lot of orphanages around. So definitely you wouldn't have doubts in giving out. And one thing I also believe is when you want to give out, you give out willingly from your heart, not because somebody yeah. will you just forget about that. I read thing. somewhere that, you know, let's love everybody. Yeah. And equally. leave the judgment to God. Exactly. Leave that, do your part. Exactly. And, and, and leave, and the, leave the rest to God. To God. Oh, please go ahead. I, I think I, so, I, I, I messed up your train of thoughts there. You were talking no, about the foundation. Yes. So um, that's how it started. The, it's, it's been in existence for a while. Mm. And then along the line, we drift away from the orphanage thing. Mm. We started having health talks, mm. health screening, educating the kids. And then we added... Um, mobile library mobile library now yes. that excites me because I, I love reading i think that reading culture for kids is very yeah. important how is that how, how so is that what we do is our recent um projects we did at odum mm -hmm. it's a community in the greater Accra region mm -hmm. which from our research realized that there is high rate of teenage pregnancy there mm -hmm. so we had a talk with the whole community, not just the school kids alone, but the whole community as a whole. We had a training section for the adults. That we had a liquid soup making and then the baking. And then afterwards, we spoke to the kids and then we had a small mobile library for them. That is, um, we just had a shelf and then the books were neatly arranged on it for them so in case they want to reach out to their books they can easily get access to their books okay so when you say mobile library i'm guessing you took the books away with you yes you were done no 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 we didn't take it away we left okay. it for them because it's so in in our terms the mobile library for us is we just make a small shelf mm -hmm. about two space shelf mm -hmm. and then we arrange the books for them and it's for them just okay. for them that's how we do it. So, and what books are we looking at? What, 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 what type of books? Ranging from preschool. Okay. Sorry for my language because I'm a teacher. Mm. So if I use the Don't worry, terms. Guess it. So ranging <laughs> from preschool mm. to the primary level mm. to the GHS level. Mm. Yes. And are these textbooks or storybooks? Storybooks, textbooks, encyclopedias and all that's all mixed together. Yep. Okay. Okay, good stuff. So you were talking to the parents, you were talking yes. to the community yeah. at land. Yes. And then you had things like soap making, yes, and bead making, baking, baking. Yes. And then you also had um, the mobile library, library yeah. for, for the kids. Okay. Yes. So is this what we saw in the documentary? Um, that's the the one that came, the pictures that came. I think it was part. But the one that came, we're doing the presentation. That's um, Abanze mm -hmm. in the central region. Mm -hmm. We had a, it's a fishing community. Those they also have high rate of teenage pregnancy. So mm -hmm. we happen to talk to the whole community, and then we had a health. Okay, so sorry, 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 AC, no but when you say you spoke to the whole community about teenage pregnancy, yeah. what specifically are you telling? Now, Maxim, from personal experience, yes, I've been faced with some situation where. A teenage girl is placed in front of you mm -hmm. and she's talking to you and I've been in a situation where I'm at a loss. I don't know what to say. 
first of all because i can't relate to what to yeah. what she's telling me like the 15 year old me did not have that experience yeah and so it's hard for me to connect and say something in my estimation useful yeah. for that little girl and in that space i'm beating myself <laughs> and i want to reach out and it's, so so what what are you saying <laughs> to a young teenage girl who is sexually active mm -hmm. about teenage pregnancy? Well, what we do is we have interactions with them. We talk to them. We don't just start like that. We start talking to them. We start talking from what they want to do in future, how they want their life to be and all that. And then from there, we start with maybe jokingly we can say how many of you have boyfriends you see as you start um that kind of cordial relationship with them they naturally come out oh they open up yes then they'll tell you they'll tell you everything so since that girl is sexually active you can't at that moment tell the child to stop flirting or going around with boys but then the parents also have to play an important role. For, in, for instance, you have um, a 15-year-old girl who goes out and comes home very late. And then the moment she comes home, you start shouting and yelling at her. She will still go back and still repeat the same thing with the mindset that when she comes home, you still yell at her. So she'll continue doing it because she doesn't get that love she's supposed to get from you the mother and then she gets it outside so definitely she'll run outside to get that love so basically we don't leave the parents out too we talk to both of them to know how to relate to their girls so that they can be able to open up to them as a mother and tell them whatever is going on in their life for instance growing up i had that kind of relationship with my mom so even when I go out and a, a guy proposes to me, I come home and I'm like, Auntie B, today I met this person, <laughs> you know. And it was just like that. So me go, growing up, I knew that kind of relationship. So that's what we do with the parents. Mm. We talk to them that mm. they should have good relationship with their children. They should minimize the yelling and the beating. Because it doesn't solve anything. It rather pushes the children away. And we are in a different world altogether now. The children are learning a lot. So you need to relate to them like matured people, not kids anymore. So give them love. Yes. Talk to them. Yes. Encourage a relationship. Have have a yeah. relationship with them. But you still haven't answered my question. <laughs> I'm so interested in what you say to a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old who is sitting across from me and saying to you that I am sexually active. What do you say to this child about teenage pregnancy? I'm I'm very I'm serious about this. The I want to know the most because, in, mm. the most important thing you need to do is you just make sure that that child trusts you. Trust. Yes. To be able to confide in you and tell you virtually everything. With that, you will know the way forward to advise that child. Because if the child doesn't trust you, he or she wouldn't tell you anything. And will be doing things underground <laughs> without you knowing. So it's important to develop trust. Yeah. With, 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 with the kids. With, with teenagers. Yeah. Yes. Very important. Very, very important. Can I add that not to be too judgmental? Yes. You don't Do have you think to. we are a hypocritical society? Exactly. Sometimes, because me, my mother never judged me. Mm. Growing up, she never judged me. Grandma never did. Mm. So, when I see parents being so judgmental about their kids, sometimes it's just not, I just don't get too happy about it. Mm. Because kids are also humans. They have feelings. And they need to express themselves sometimes. Okay. So let's come back to child 
Heaven Foundation. Yes, your ma name excites me. <laughs> Charles Heaven Foundation. Is it a religious? Um, because of the heaven. No, no. it's not. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so talk to me about it. Why heaven? Why Charles Heaven? Um, Foundation? Charles Heaven because. Well, I don't even know where I got that name from anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I got that name from. But uh, I believe that the more kids are happy or children are happy, mm. they find the world an interesting place to be mm. in and it becomes a heaven to them. Mm. So so encourage, encourage a world where kids are happy. Yeah. And then for you, everything would, would be, be okay. okay with them. Okay. Okay. Well, let me read this one. This one says, I really like the philan philanthropic project. I also run an orphanage. I would like to talk to your previous guests who are into the autistic program, the Jenny Foundation, if I'm right. Thanks. Okay. So I will let Jenny have your number so that, you know, you can contact her and, and, and take it from there. So, um, AC, if anybody is skeptical yeah. about some of these projects and the, and, and the motivation, what would you say to them? If anybody is watching us at home and thinking, oh, these people, mm -hmm. what, because there are reservations. Yeah. You know, you would agree with me that sometimes the, the, the reasons are not so, what's the word, selfless. Yeah. What would you say to anybody who is woman is a little skeptical you know, about all these projects and all these donations people do and all, and all these things? What would you say as somebody who is in it? Well, it's quite difficult for somebody to believe what you are doing. But then, the moment the person comes on board, the person really knows that you are doing something reasonable. Mm -hmm. So whoever is home and probably is having like second thoughts about it, just find a trustworthy one. One you feel it's um they've have constant projects. Mm -hmm. Join, observe them and see. Probably so, you'll so get your I like what you're saying. You said one one that has constant projects. So you do yes. have constant projects. Yes, we do. Talk to me about some of your projects. We I mean you're speaking to us about some. Yeah. But what are the other projects that you have are they very different from um, each other? Like are the projects different or do you do the same things with all your projects? Um Initially, when we started, as I said earlier, we started with just donations. Mm -hmm. We were donating to one of an age. Where were you getting the cash from? Hmm. The cash matter, we'll talk about that. You, see, you must be rich. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> cash <laughs> matter, we, oh no, no. I, I'm not. So, I'm how not are you getting hmm. money to do these Cash donations? matter. Yeah. Well, when we started, I had people, you know, I'm a very friendly person funny <laughs> funny and then those who know me will understand me mm. uh, i talked to a few friends about it they came on board so initially we were doing just contributions then we put it together get the items and then send it like that so as we were growing then my how do i put it my team also was growing. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we pay monthly dues with my volunteers. How much? Oh, How much I can't disclose that. that. <laughs> That's it. No, so that's an expensive oh. to join. It's Those not expensive. Who don't have money. You need to know that. So we pay monthly dues. <laughs> <laughs> that one day I'm not talking about okay. it. So we pay monthly dues uh -huh. and then... Um, what we do is, I add up with my salary. My husband helps. My mom helps. My grandma helps. Virtually, all my relatives. Yes. And then my volunteers also help. They really help me a lot. For that, I can't let them down. Mm. They really help me a lot. Mm. So, we put all together. Maybe we plan ahead that this year, we are having a reading project. So we put everything together. 
and then we get the books definitely when we go we are we are not going to just talk like that we have some fun with the kids mm -hmm. and then probably share some candies and those stuffs with them and then we do what we are supposed to do and then we go that's how we've been able to sustain the the foundation till now okay so if i want to reach out to you yeah. if i'm interested in this foundation mm -hmm. um who, 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 what you do essentially is do donations. Yes. You also do education yes. about teenage pregnancy. Are there yeah. any other topics to do? Yes. Um, currently, we are having a project in August mm -hmm. where we'll be having, we'll be teaching, um, we'll have the health screening, mm -hmm. the general health screening. We'll have the livelihood empowerment. That's the bead making, the liquid soup and all that. Afterwards, we'll have educational section with the younger kids that's the preschool mm -hmm. we we'll have this phonics uh, rhymes mm -hmm. and those things play uh, clay dough mm -hmm. how to mold how to mix their colors and all that we'll have with them and then later on our main targets which are the teenagers mm -hmm. will have a talk with them and all that mm -hmm. yeah okay. and this is in august Yes, it's in August. The, the, the specific one is yes. in August. Okay, so if I want to contact you, how do I do that? Um, we we have a page on Facebook. Okay, so a Facebook page. Yes, and then um Instagram page. Instagram page. Yes. What's the name? Um, Charles Heaven Foundation Ghana. Okay. That's the same thing on Facebook. Charles Heaven Foundation Ghana. Okay. Yeah. And the Ghana is the full Ghana or just G H? No, G H. Just just G H. Okay, Am so I Charles Heaven. Sure? G H. <laughs> And, and again, the same question I asked um, Jenny mm -hmm. is, what kind of help do you want? You know, if I'm interested in what you do and I want to come on board, what, what would you be expecting from me? Um, basically, when somebody wants to come on board, what I do is I don't take physical cash from anyone. Because when you take money from people, they have a perception that you are going to spend their money. Okay. Yes. So I don't take physical cash from people. What I do is whatever you have, depending on the project. So maybe you have books, you have pencils, you have toiletries you want to bring along. You, you can bring it along. But some people also do, what they do is they can give you the cash and tell you that I want to, you to use it to buy this. So the moment we buy it, we get a receipt for it and then we present you to you that that's what we purchased and that's the amount we used in purchasing it mm. so uh virtually everything is transparent we don't leave anything out it's, it's important so is it just financial assistance you, you see um not really okay. we need um those in those in the health sector on mm. board we need teachers on board mm -hmm. it's very necessary we need we need every volunteer yes volunteers on board so that they can assist us with what we do because it's quite difficult it is difficult so do you have any kids of your own okay so <laughs> do you because I, I want to know what the motivation you know what what, what the motivation is because there has to be something that drives you to, mm. to, to want to give give back, back. Or, or, or help or, or contribute. With Jenny, I realize it's her profession mm. because of the fact that she's a teacher with special needs yeah. kids. So th that is her motivation. You, what's, your, what's the motivation in your case? My motivation is equally my work. Your work as Because well. I was trained as a social worker. Okay. Oh, yes. yes. You are a social worker. Yes. Yes, I forgot that. And going to rural communities seeing those kids because i i didn't happen to find myself in such a situation mm. so in my house i get everything i want so i don't see why someone somewhere should also be going through difficulties mm. it's sometimes just sad yeah. <laughs> It's, it's just sad. And you want so, to reach out and do something. Yes. Well, let me read a few of the messages that are coming sure. in. This one says, I see you doing a good work, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. 
Yes, I'm Sarah. Hey, okay. <laughs> Keep it up. God richly bless your kind heart. You didn't tell us your name. No. You know, for you to know she's Sarah, <laughs> then you really know her, right? <laughs> then this person really knows you. Okay, this one says, Hi, I'm really impressed with the ambitions of these young ladies. They should keep it up. It's immense. God bless you and your team. His name is Kojoji Abrantier. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you know him too. Yes. There's another hi. Okay, all the highs. Hi. <laughs> but do send me more than just the hi. All right. Let's see here. Okay. So if I want to reach out to you, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. is there a phone number that I yes. can? Yes. Do you want to give it out? Sure. Okay, please. That's um, 0249 eight six seven three 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 okay zero two four nine eight six seven three 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 okay. that's okay. my personal line that's your personal yeah line. okay okay great great stuff great 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 is there anything else i have you know left out that you want to say to everybody watching us this oh. evening well i I don't have much to say, but all I want to say is I'm just grateful for all those who have supported us for this years, mm. who have trusted, who have trust in us and also not letting us down because it's not quite easy doing this. There are times, there are moments I cry. Mm. There are moments because... because the, uh, yeah, I can imagine that. People will disappoint you. You are on field, you are supposed to present the items, you are looking for this, you can't find this. Meanwhile, they are expecting more. And there are times when you go to the communities, you get abused. Really? Yes. People insult you and all that. But then, I, I don't look at that. No, wait, why, why are people insulting you in the communities? Um, well, maybe what they were expecting, you know, it's not what they want, to, you, they see what they were expecting is not what they see but then it's just one of those things and it's rather strengthens me because at the long run i come home to cry at home <laughs> <laughs> you see you're funny <laughs> <laughs> okay this one says a father abandoned the child and the mother a father abandoned the child and the mother finds it difficult to care how may you help do you help situations like these if I um this situation is a social um workers case so what you do is the person have to first of all report to social welfare department mm. the father would would then be served the notice mm. he will come and explain himself afterwards there will be a fee for the father to be paying monthly for the upkeep of the child mm. if the ch if father refuses to do that then they proceed to the court so if um a father abandons leaves the child i don't think the mother should go through hell because there are authorities around that we can seek help from and the social welfare is one so you shouldn't just stress yourself over it. Just go there, report the incidents, and then they'll take it up from there. Okay. Okay. Well, it's immense. It's, it's yes. been a pleasure. It's, it's been a pleasure, you know, interacting you with uh, interacting with you this evening. Your organization is Child Heaven Foundation mm. Ghana, yes. and of course, you are into kids in deprived communities. Yes. You know, giving back to the society educating and, mm -hmm. and things like that great stuff AC. thank great you stuff. and 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 more grief to your already greased elbows <laughs> <laughs> more grease to your already greased elbows well, thank you thank you for what you do thank you well viewers this has been a show you know um yeah I, i've said it over and over and over and over again the need for all of us you know to fill spaces you know, it's, it's the only way to grow this community if we all get involved, all hands on deck, all hands on deck, and make it a personal, personal duty to see this, this society become better for all of us. Have a lovely evening. Justice Apia is up next with Hot News Tuesday, and I'll see you again tomorrow with the book review, you know, um, 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 show, edition of the couch. I'll say this. Let me say thank you to Naya Chidi 
for my makeup Kitty, thank you so much you're making me look lovely even if i do say so myself i would also like to say thank you to zainu laundry services now zainu's number is 0246 173604 i'll say that again it's 0246 173604 do contact zainu laundry services for all your laundry and ironing services they are the best i can testify to that and they are also really 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 affordable so yes th this has been our show i'll see you tomorrow have a lovely evening bye